Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Jamie Wolf, Associate Administrator for Information Management and CIO at the National Nuclear Security Administration. Jamie, thanks for being on the program. My pleasure. Really excited to be here today with you. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And, and you know, the NNSA is a really critical agency within the Department of Energy. For folks who aren't quite familiar, though, with what it does, can you kind of explain about what your agency is, is doing on a day in and day out basis? Absolutely. This is, I, I really like to do this because most people don't know what NNSA is. Uh, and in fact, when we say that acronym, they often just think of the National Security Administration. Uh, but the National Nuclear Security Administration, uh, we work in the Department of Energy in national security and nuclear security priorities. Uh, we have a few different missions, and one of those missions is delivering, maintaining the stockpile of nuclear weapons that we rely on uh, for national security here in the United States. Uh, but we also work extensively in nuclear nonproliferation to help safeguard the United States from any kind of materials, either worldwide or, or domestically. Uh, interestingly, we also work with the Department of Navy and we power the nuclear Navy, so the, the submarines and the aircraft carriers. But then we, we also have this additional mission. So we bring incredible science and technology to national security through the national labs in the Department of Energy. Uh, and that unique experience, that unique knowledge and, and those incredibly smart people, we bring them to national security challenges uh, and work at that intersection to be able to make sure that the, the best solutions are available for our warfighters or other parts of the national security enterprise. Got it. I mean, so it's pretty high profile, critical missions there. How does technology, you know, IT, cloud, things that you worry on a day in and day out basis support those missions? Yeah, you know, I, in most organizations now, IT underpins the mission. We support the mission. Right. I, there's not much that can happen in the mission without IT. So in the National Nuclear Security Administration, uh, we look at IT in a few different ways. Uh, we provide that underlying capability. Uh, the national labs and the, the plants and the sites of NNSA, they do a lot of the IT work themselves. And it could be from just the normal you know, email or business systems all the way to operational systems that are uh, manufacturing plants or testing facilities. So there's a whole range there. I, but then the cyber uh, perspective of the that enterprise the of the IT. Uh, we do a lot of that from our team uh, in conjunction with those sites across the NSA. Uh, but I think one of the, the most important pieces is really the information management. And so I see that as that tie between the mission and the technology. And how do we get the, the technologists into the, the business more so that we have that connectivity and we provide that opportunity for the mission uh, to be improved more efficient or more effective through the use of technology. Sure. And so obviously we're here to talk uh, specifically about cloud. I'm wondering, does NNSA have a, a cloud strategy? How does that fit into your broader IT strategy? So we actually don't have a specific cloud strategy. Uh, we, we are more focused on IT modernization than we are on a specific type of technology. Mm -hmm. And But we do have priorities when it comes to cloud. Uh, we certainly subscribe and I you know I believe that the federal cloud computing strategy is a very smart strategy uh, in yeah. fact we yeah. refer to it as cloud smart right uh, but that's a recognition that there are multiple different ways to employ technology uh, and we we should be choosing the best one and using the best practices to do so uh, but that being said we we also use cloud yeah. uh, and so you know there's a couple of things that I think are incredibly important right now uh, in our organization, we are still at a point where we are deploying commercial cloud-based technologies for you know, business automation and collaboration. Uh, so you know, that's a priority of, of our organization to get everybody into those tools so that we can uh, work together better, you know, collaboration and interoperability across different parts of the organization. Uh, additionally, you know, we are looking at the classified cloud as a real opportunity. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're aware and many of the, the folks in this webinar are aware of some of the work that DOD is doing around the classified cloud uh, for their secret network. So we're looking at that with anticipation to be able to take advantage of the work that DOD is doing and move uh, more of our capabilities on the classified networks into those systems when they're available, um, you know, when they're proven out and, and have the right security around it. 
Interesting. And I mean, obviously, security is such a consideration at an agency like yours. And DOD has been plotting this path forward with JWCC um, with security in mind. Uh, how have you seen the evolution of cloud security, specific to the, the public sector, to the government, to the national security mission, evolve in recent years? Yeah, that's a, you know, it's an interesting thing to look at. And, uh, you know, I like to think in different classification levels when it comes to this. Uh, we've seen a proliferation of capability on the unclassified systems. You know, and that, that's market driven. Those are commercial companies that are in crea creating incredible capabilities. Uh, and we take advantage of that, like most big organizations. You know, right. we put those capabilities, we put those analytics tools into our environments to, you know, ensure that the, the data and the mission is protected. Uh, so we're a big consumer in that space. But then when you go to the national security side and you start dealing more with the classified systems, that's not a robust commercial market. Uh, and so that's the piece. A lot of it is still driven by government standard and government involvement. And that's why I'm so excited to see DOD pushing forward into uh, commercial cloud so that we create more of a marketplace where there's competition, where there's more tool sets, more capabilities that we can bring to that cybersecurity mission. And we can mirror what is happening on the unclassified uh, on the other classified networks that we have. Yeah, so it's fair to say you're kind of adopting cloud where you can, um, but then for some of those more sensitive classified missions, you're working and waiting with DOD to see where they go with JWCC so you can more fully adopt some of those technologies where it sees fit? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but we're not waiting either. Uh, sure. One of our classified networks that we we do a lot of our uh, NNSA-focused mission on, uh, that network we're actually working with the providers, the commercial cloud providers, and we're deploying a private commercial cloud on that network. So we're leveraging those technologies at scale. I, uh, you know, we are working with Microsoft Azure to deploy that capability on that network. And so, you know, it looks and feels like a commercial cloud, mm -hmm. but it is very controlled and it is available only to us. So that's one end of the uh, scale. But the other side, when you look at uh, our network that mirrors DOD CIPRNET, so it's a, a national security focused network. Uh, that's where I really want to drive towards that, that commercial cloud. And you know, we do, we anticipate a pilot this year, uh, getting some of our folks, our technical folks into that environment to test it out, uh, to make sure that we have the right architecture uh, to be able to use it over the next couple of years. I guess that probably gives you probably the scale that cloud uh, provides by having it uh, in use on the CIPRNET uh, network? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, scale is important. Uh, doing things at an enterprise level is important. Right. Uh, all those challenges that we had in our normal work environments exist on the classified systems. It's, right. it's a mirror of the, the challenges that we have. So when you think of interoperability, you know, when you're doing something in a common cloud environment, they're building interoperability into that environment. It's natural. That's, that's the benefit of what we're seeing on the commercial uh, unclassified side. And that's the kind of thing that we want to mirror on the classified. The security, the interoperability, the collaboration, uh, but then also having a marketplace of, of strong tools. You know, it, to me, it's, it's most important to have that broad market. And so, our customers, you know, people in NNSA, can go and use the capabilities that they need for their mission. Yeah, I mean, I imagine as, as you kind of figure out this classification problem, then the, the market can kind of follow and you can add in services on top of that, um, a more robust marketplace of services. Um, I'm wondering, you know, the, the pandemic obviously uh, shifted a lot of the public sector into the cloud by necessity. But at NSA, I don't think you can exactly maintain, you know, a nuclear weapon from your your, your living room. So how do you kind of, um, or how, how did the pandemic maybe shift some things for you in certain areas? Um, did, did, did it kind of cause a shift in any of maybe your business functions and things like that in terms of cloud and technology adoption? Uh, absolutely. And you're 100% right. A lot of our mission is at a facility. Uh, we have frontline workers that are on manufacturing lines. We have people that are testing capabilities every day. Uh, and then scientists that are using 
cutting edge capabilities in the national labs. They do that at the place. You know, they, a lot of that work just can't be done remotely. But we do have a lot of remote workers. Uh, and so what I'm seeing is actually a kind of a shift in how people work. Uh, and it, it could be any business function, uh, but people are starting to come to work more because of the community, you know, their team. They're, they're coming in on common days with their team so that they build collaboration, they build culture within a team. Uh, and then we also have a lot of people that are coming in for specific classified work. So, you know, we, that's a shift. Most people were in the office all the time before. Now people are coming in for very specific things. Uh, we as technologists have kind of had to react to that. So how do we enable those people to do their job in the office when they're in the office? Uh, and so, you know, for us, conference rooms is a perfect example. Uh, we need more classified conference rooms. We more, need more classified collaboration capabilities. Uh, and we're doing amazing things in that space. Um, you know, I, 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 it's, it's almost scary, uh, but there's a certain physical disconnect switch so that you can use your computer in a classified space on a web conference. But it, you know, you push that button and it disconnects the microphone and the camera. Uh, it's about a year ago, I think we bought all of them because wow. we needed thousands. And so there was only one NSA approved device for that, a small company that, that manufactures them. And because we need these and we need these now, we buy them all. And, and the marketplace just doesn't support that. And the, the supply chain is, uh, was stressed by COVID, but then also that shift in priority that, that we have. Uh, but we are finding those ways. So now, you know, as a, as a customer of NNSA IT, you can sit there in a classified space and you can securely connect to a Zoom call or a Teams call and do that in that classified space. And we have the surety that uh, information is not going to be transmitted across that unclassified network that isn't uh, meant to be transmitted. And was it, is it fair to say prior to the pandemic that wasn't happening at NSA? It was not, yeah. no. Uh, those kinds of capabilities we just, we didn't do. Right. Uh, if you had classified work, you got up from your seat, went to the classified space, or in that classified space, uh, you talked about classified things. So it's, it's how do we do things differently? I, and I don't, you know, the pandemic drove that in all of our workplaces, but I think that uh, that just emphasized a trend. You know, we all want flexibilities in our work life. We want to be able to do things from wherever we are, whether it's home or it's on the road. We could be on vacation and we need to do something. Uh, you want the ability to do that job. Sometimes that, for us, that can be a classified job. And so, not everybody, but for the people that need that capability, we've got to deliver the technology that enables them. And, you know, we talked about DoD a couple times. They obviously rushed out some, some uh, big enterprise collaboration tools, um, and, th and then about a year or so in, they decided that they needed to move to a more permanent solution. I'm wondering at NNSA, I know you, I think you've only been there for about a, about a year or so now, but I'm wondering, did the pandemic kind of force any sort of, you know, rush to certain technologies that the, you then had to sort out and say, okay, we, we like to keep this one or we maybe need to get rid of this one and move to something more permanent? Or have you kind of rationalized um, the technology developments that have happened over the last couple of years? Certainly it's a driver of it. And yeah. you know, I'm actually a, a customer of DOD's tools. So right. I, I'm a Navy reservist. I continue to serve as part of the Department of Defense. And uh, you know, I saw that transition happen. I got to participate in that and it was fantastic. You know, it was a new capability, you got to use it. But it was a disruption when they went from the, you know, essentially the test environment to a more permanent, uh, there was that transition. And, and as a customer, you think, well, that's a hard thing to deal with. And then when I step back into my role now, it's how do you enable the business to move forward without causing disruptions? And so our focus is actually, when you talk about applications and capabilities, it's how do we transition from what we have to a better solution? And that solution may certainly be a cloud-based technology. I, you know, we're moving from custom-built applications more to you know, common commercial platforms where we can just build inside the platform uh, and more importantly, the people that have the mission that do the job, they also have the ability to build in that platform and make sure that the business processes align and, and the tool works for them. 
Uh, those are the kinds of transitions that, to me, are more enduring. They support customer need. Uh, they really deliver the capability that you want as a user of the technology. More holistically, if I kind of step back and I say, you know, those big muscle movements of technology, I do go back to that, uh, the collaboration. Yeah. So, you know, a couple of our sites are still in that transition to commercial capabilities. Uh, for the most part, uh, we have generally been deploying Microsoft Office 365 capabilities. I, and we need to make sure everybody is on that capability so that we can enable the, the cross-site communication. Uh, you need to be in common tools, common environments, just to be able to enable, you know, you can push the button and make a video call to the person that is on the other side of the country but works in the same field as you. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, you, you've talked about how there's the demand from, from, from employees for these you know, newer collaboration tools. There's also the challenge of, I guess, I don't know, change management and uh, making sure people are adopting some of the new tools that you're using at an enterprise scale so that you can do that collaboration you just talked about. How, how are you approaching that in NSA so you kind of can smooth out the hiccups that might occur as you're adopting new technologies? Well, that's a really hard process and you yeah. never smooth out all the hiccups. Because yeah. uh, you know, technology and working in an IT shop, you're really working with people and you're delivering technological solutions to help them do their job a little bit better. Uh, but the people is the real challenge there. Uh, you know, you've got to be able to shape the technology to meet their need. Some of the things that we're doing, and, and if I go to the, the national security space, the, the classified space, I, you know, we, we have capabilities and we are modernizing the underlying technology that exists on the network. And so you know, it's, it's a matter of moving that workload or that application from the old environment to a new environment, which drives updates to the application. I was actually just talking to our chief information security officer this morning, and we were talking about a given application that, of course, is different on every browser that it uses. And so we have five different versions of the same application on our classified networks, uh, and we are consolidating. So there's different functionality for every version of that same application. And, and somehow we've got to get the customers to understand that it's going to look and feel different as we move to a consolidated version but we've got to make sure the underlying data works in the new environment. It's incredibly complicated. Fortunately, the technology in today's world has masked the complexity that exists underneath it, uh, but it is incredibly complex. And so it's, it's those kinds of use cases that we have to work through methodically so that you, know, you as a person that uses that application, uh, it becomes seamless to you. You, know, you go in and you do the work the same way you've always done the work, and we have hopefully enabled you to do that correctly. Got it. Coming from the DOD world, I mean, you know the Defense Department is, is such a federated, often siloed place. I'm wondering, as the CIO at NNSA, do you deal with the same challenges where labs kind of want to do their own things and, and other organizations want to do their own, own things? Or do you have more of a seamless kind of job, I guess, in getting all the different um, people to get in line? Or, or how, how does that work at NNSA? I, we are highly federated. Okay. Uh, it's not quite like DOD, okay. but uh, NNSA is comprised of programs. Uh, you know, my organization is one of those programs, but we have several different programs. And then we have the national labs, the plants, and the sites that make up NNSA that do the mission. And you know, across that, there is a lot of autonomy for those senior leaders to do the things that they need to do to be successful, including deploying technology. Uh, in many regards, we're a supporting element to them to make sure that they you know, have the right tools to be able to make either a good decision or, or deploy it correctly, or you know, in some regards, our team will maintain that technology over time. When we get to the labs, you know, these are large organizations. You know, Sandia National Lab has 20,000 plus people. They have a very large, highly capable technology team that supports them. I, I view it as a partnership between my role and the CIO at that facility on how do we move forward together. Uh, there are certain things that we may demand from our perspective. Uh, those are few and far between. Uh, usually it's how do we work together, where are the focus areas, you know, where as an as a entire enterprise should we invest? 
know, what things should we do in common? What things do we not need to do in common? And maintain that autonomy. Uh, and I think that autonomy is important. You know, the, the closer you are to the customer, the more capable you are of making sure that the customer has the right tools and, and capabilities. Sure. Can you talk about any, you know, maybe there's a common theme or maybe there's different asks from the different labs, but can you talk about any of the, I don't guess, more recent um, de demands, requirements that you're hearing from the, the labs when it comes to technology that you can help support? Uh, absolutely. And I, I would hit the two different sides here. There's, I think right now, NNSA is in what I would term as being a generational shift in our ERP systems. So, you know, it's, we're probably, most of those systems are 15 to 20 years old, and our labs, plants, and sites are in modernization efforts there. And this is a, a great cloud story, because most of our labs, plants, and sites will be choosing cloud-based technologies or in some process of, of, of choosing that now. So, you know, it's, it's how do we enable that? How do we ensure that the, the team at one facility has an open path of communication to the team at the other facility that just finished the same project? Uh, and, and we're working on those kinds of things together. Those are locally executed. They're, you know, they do the project themselves. Uh, and they have unique aspects about their business that they want to uh, build into those ERP types of solutions. Um, so that's, a, that's a, a way where the federation is important and then the, the cross-organizational collaboration that we help facilitate. But then if I look at the, the cybersecurity demands that we have right now, you know, being a large federated organization, in many regards, our cybersecurity posture has also been federated. Uh, we maintain a, a central enterprise security operations center and we have feeds from the different uh, parts of the organization or, or where we have technology deployed. Uh, but I see that going more towards an enterprise approach. And we are actually in the process. We have a, a couple enterprise scale tools now, and I, we're investing in a couple more. And I see that shaping to be more of a, a central consolidated singular approach for some things, certainly not for everything, but uh, but that will give us more transparency across the entire organization, uh, more understanding, more ability to analyze the trends and understand what is happening across all sites, and then work with the sites to remediate any issues that we may discover. Got it. That's an interesting perspective. It sounds like it's a constant balancing act and taking each case as, as it comes and evaluating it. But Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break here, but we'll pick up the conversation when we come back. Thanks for joining us for part one of our conversation with Jamie Wolf, Associate Administrator for Information Management and CIO at the National Nuclear Security Administration. We'll present part two of our NNSA discussion after we get an industry perspective. Now let me send you back to the studio for more on the cloud exchange. Mm -hmm.